When an object is thrown upwards, its kinetic energy is converted to gravitational potential energy. For example, when throwing a ball in the air. When the ball gains height, work is done against gravity as kinetic energy is converted to gravitational potential energy. The ball loses speed and also gains height. Remember that Ke is kinetic energy and GPE is gravitational potential energy. When an object falls, its gravitational potential energy is converted to kinetic energy. So when the ball loses height again, work is done by gravity as the GPE is converted to Ke. The ball gains speed and the height decreases. So what can we say about the relation between these two types of energies? Assuming no energy is lost to the surroundings, the change in gravitational energy is equal to the change in kinetic energy during these processes. But this doesn't work when there are resistive forces, as work is done against them, and energy is lost to heat, so a terminal speed is reached. So assuming no resistive forces are present, the change in kinetic energy is equal to the change in gravitational potential energy, or Ek is equal to Ep. The change in kinetic energy is given by half mv squared, and the change in gravitational potential energy is given by mgh. So we can say that half mv squared is equal to mgh. But remember that the gravitational potential energy equation only applies near the surface of a planet. We can also cancel out the masses to simplify the equation further. You should remember this equation and when you can use it, as it's often the starting point for many harder problems. So let's have a look at an example. A 0.8 kilogram icicle breaks from the roof of a cave and hits the ground 6 metres below. Calculate the speed at which the icicle hits the ground. Give your answer to two significant figures. So we can round our answers to a certain number of digits and the number of significant figures are the number of digits in the value. So for step one, let's write down the key information and check the units. The mass is equal to 0.8 kilograms. The height is equal to 6 metres and the field strength is equal to 9.8 metres per second squared. And we want to calculate the speed. We'll be looking at each energy individually instead of using combined equations for this example, but you can use either method. So for step two, let's calculate the initial gravitational potential energy. So GPE is equal to mass multiplied by gravitational field strength multiplied by height. So the GPE is equal to 0.8 kilograms multiplied by 9.8 meters per second squared multiplied by 6 meters. And that is equal to 47.04 joules. At this point in the problem, we should keep the value exact instead of rounding. Then for step three, let's rearrange the kinetic energy equation so that only V squared is on one side. So Ek is equal to half mv squared, and we can rearrange this algebraically as long as we do the same action on both sides. And we can also swap around the two sides. So we start by multiplying both sides of the equation by two. That gives us two Ek is equal to mv squared. We can then divide both sides of the equation by m. That gives us 2ek divided by m is equal to v squared, or v squared is equal to 2ek over m. For step four, let's take the square root of both sides to make speed the subject of the equation. So it was important to bring v squared to one side first, as we must take the square root of the whole side, not just one term. So that becomes v is equal to the square root of 2ek divided by m. Then for step 5, let's substitute the gravitational potential energy for kinetic energy in the rearranged equation to find speed. And we can use our potential energy value here as all of the potential energy will be converted to kinetic energy. So the equation becomes v is equal to the square root of 2ep divided by m. So v is equal to the square root of 2 times by 47.04 joules divided by 0.8 kilograms and that gives us 10.8443 metres per second. 
Then for the final step, we want to round the speed to two significant figures. So our first significant figure is one, our second is zero, and then the next value is eight. So we need to round our second significant figure to give us 11 meters per second. Thanks for watching. If you want to take your GCSE revision to the next level, head over to launchpadlearning.com and check out our smart learning platform that's been designed to get you top results in your exams. We cover your whole specification and make revision fun with interactive quizzes, easy to follow videos and more. You'll be kept motivated by your own AI tutor who's here to support you every step of the way. To check it out for yourself, click here. Or click here to keep watching a selection of the videos from our full GCSE physics course. See you there.